Oh, it was the wrath of God. That's the wrath of God. Creature's getting blued up. Back of the command zone. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone, playing some Graz the Unstoppable Juggernaut today, and today's deck list comes to us from Patreon supporter Jeff. Uh, let's take a look at this opener. We've got two lands, our Millery Sphere. Yeah, I like this hand. we got a Soul Ring and all his dust. Maybe it's a little light on creatures, but uh, hopefully we draw into those. We will keep. So this is an interesting deck. Uh, this deck started with Mere Battle Sphere as the commander, as a rule zero commander. Uh, I think Jeff started this deck eh, maybe about two years ago, something like that. And over that period of time, they've actually printed two commanders that are, I don't want to say better necessarily, but give you a legal commander option to play Mere Tribal. One of them is Graz the Unstoppable. The other is Urtet, which I played on the channel at some point in the past. And both of them do Mere Tribal really well. The 99s of these decks are the same, um, but today we're running Graz in the Command Zone. And I have seen Jeff play this once or twice, and Graz is actually really strong. Like, all of your creatures turn into Juggernauts, which is, when they're all 1-1s, like, that's a lot of damage. And it can just, like, overwhelm you very quickly. Plus, he's got some cute little tricks in this deck, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. Uh, anyway, we won the die roll. We go first. Let's get... What do we get first? Emergent Zone, I guess. Uh, do this. Play the Soul Ring. Uh, cast the Armillary Sphere. And that's a pretty solid turn one. After we crack the Armillary Sphere, I kind of hope we draw something, because I don't know that we have, like, a ton of follow-up after cracking this thing. Witches Oven for opponent. So let's take a read of our commander. It's Graz the Unstoppable Juggernaut, 8 mana for a 7-5. Juggernauts you control attack each combat if able. Juggernauts you control can't be blocked by walls. And other creatures you control have base power and toughness 5-3 and are Juggernauts in addition to their other creature types. Uh, so it turns everything into a Juggernaut. If, if any of you have been playing for a very long period of time, uh, you might recall the original Juggernaut, which was like a pretty solid card back in its day. It was a 5-3 that had to attack every turn and couldn't be blocked by walls. And for 4 mana in that day and age, it traded with a lot of things pretty favorably. And like, if you couldn't block it, you can be taking some damage. I definitely had some Juggernauts in my deck back in the day. So uh, just a classic magic card. And uh, I actually think this is a pretty cool take on things to turn all your creatures into Juggernauts. Uh, there's a land. So yeah, we're definitely just going to be like playing lands for a few turns here. Uh, I guess we play the Urza's Tower, uh, and then we can play the Stone Forge and crack the Armillary Sphere. Pull some lands out of the deck. Not a ton of wastes in the deck, but I guess that kind of makes sense because you can you can really go ham with the utility lands uh, when you're playing colorless because you don't need to worry about the colors. So let's take a peek at the deck list. Here's the deck list. Uh, obviously, it's colorless and. I've talked about this a bunch where, you know, it's much harder to get access to certain things in colorless, like card draw tends to be a little overcosted, removal tends to be overcosted, uh, you know, our a lot of our removal is going to be Ugin and All is Dust, and those aren't cheap. Um, we got Ulamog up here, same sort of thing. Yeah, we got some Eldrazi at the top. Those can fill some holes, but again, they're all 10 to 12 mana, so it is a thing. Uh, opponent plays Plantier of Orthak. I haven't even seen this one. Cool art. Love that art. Reminds me of the original Ice Manipulator. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, put an influence counter on this thing and scry two. Then target opponent may have you draw a card. If that player doesn't, mill X cards where X is the number of influence counters on the thing. And that player loses life equal to the mana value of those cards. I think they can draw one. Although, uh, I guess, like, if it's only one counter, <laughs> it's probably better off. Well, they get a card draw out of it. Man, that's so much text. They put so much text on cards now. Just like, I have to read that thing four times just to understand what it does. There's a Kedis coming into play. Watch out for those. Those get you killed in a hurry. And I'm partnered with Silas Wren. Anyway, the spicy bits of this deck. Mere Incubator. Actually, I think just Mere Incubator. So, you crack the Mere Incubator, search for any number of artifact cards, exile them, then create that many 1-1s. One uh, so, you can put... 20 to 30 one ones into play at a time with this. And then with Graz in the command zone, they all become 5-3s. So, uh, and this is the type of thing, you can do this at the end step, so it's pretty hard to interact with. 
you know, you can, you'll can you want to wait till everyone's kind of tapped out. You're not going to get blown out by, like, a Rift, an Eyes, a Teferi's Protection, anything like that. But, yeah, he, Jeff's gotten me with it a number of times. It's surprisingly effective. So that's kind of the, the spiciness in this deck, and I think there's some other stuff we can do with that, too. I sort of forget. But, yeah. Anyway, it brings back to our turn. There's a Manifold Key. Manifold Key is a card that I like. Doesn't necessarily, like, help us a ton. It does help us ramp just a little bit quicker, so we can, like... How much mana do we have? Be three, four, five. We're on five mana. What's this one do? Oh, uh, that gives us two for colorless. Okay, well, we'll want to get that one into play next. Not really going to make a difference at this moment. Not losing anything, just because uh, our hand is all, all the big stuff. <laughs> all the big stuff. I'm a little nervous about, like, dropping this too early, because... Akroma's Memorial is an incredibly good card. I know it's fallen off in popularity a bit, just because, like, there's a lot of cards coming out all the time, but in all the decks where I land in Akroma's Memorial, I usually win that game. Like, your creatures become so unbelievably strong. Opponent's going to do the thing again. Uh, we'll try the mill thing this time. Hopefully that doesn't bite us too hard. No. Uh, we get Ding for three. We get their Eternal Witness, and I'm sure they'll have a way to pull that out, but at least for the time being, I'm much happier with that in the graveyard. Let's see what else is in here. Uh, Mirror Turbine and Mirror Matrix can also get pretty interesting. Oh, Mirror Reservoir also, yeah. Like, there's some of these Mirror cards that when you get a bunch of them in play, like, wild things kind of start to happen. I guess I use the word wild a little bit loosely, but ten years ago they would have been considered wild. Now they're, you know, <laughs> now it's a it's a big complex machine that requires a lot of parts, a lot of mana to put everything together. But uh, once it is up and going, I have seen it a number of times that you can do some really interesting things with the mirrors. So Silas Wren coming into play. Uh, opponent hits seven deadly with the Kettis, and Kettis stings us all for one. Take a look at what our opponents are doing today. First up is Seven Deadly Sins piloting Samwise Ganji. Two mana for a 2-2. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, create a food token. And then sacrifice three foods. Return target historic card from your graveyard to your hand. Seems pretty good. So the self-mill makes sense there. Yeah, I'm guessing it's just like food and green-white reanimator. That'd be my guess. Historic reanimator. Uh, next up in the middle, we've got Chaos 2075 piloting Kedis Emberclaw Familiar. And Silas Wren's Seeker Adept. I don't really know what the plan is. So Silas cares about hitting and getting artifacts back. Kedis helps spread commander damage like crazy. Could be Voltron. That would actually be a very smart Voltron setup because Silas gets your stuff back and Kedis makes everyone dead really quickly. I would say that I have undervalued Kedis a little bit over the years. And it's not that I ever thought that it was bad. It's just that this came out... Oh, there's the mirror incubator. <laughs> there's our win condition. Finishing the thought. This came out... Right at the beginning of when they started printing, like, 4 million Commander cards every year. Um, so, you know, it just, it's hard to justify that slot for it, because there became a lot of competition for each deck slot. So, anyway, brings it back to our turn. Uh, let's get the Shrine of the Forsaken Gods in before I forget to do that. I'm not just going to run this down there. Uh, we're going to want to have the 12 mana to do it and then crack it. And based on how things are going, I don't think it should take us that long to do it, so... What can we do this turn? We can cast our commander this turn. Let's get our commander in. Uh, we need to do this thing with the manifold key to untap the soul ring to make additional mana. Oh, uh, tell me we're one short. Uh, Could have swore we had enough. Oh, I see. Uh, it's the shrine. You can only use the shrine. Because I tap beforehand, you can only use the double on the shrine while casting. Wait. Oh, only if you control seven or more lands. Duh. Duh. Oh, man, are we running this Acroma's Memorial down here? That's such a risky thing to do. We're just, just going to tap out. We're tapping out. We're very far ahead of our opponents right now. We've ramped pretty well. They have not. So I think we just take it easy right here because, again, I don't want to get this shot because it's just such a good card. Like, this with this and our commander is an easy win of the game. We just need to, like, make sure they're in play and don't get blown up. Uh, some thoughts on colorless decks. So I've been seeing them a little bit more often. There are some newer commanders, like we said. Uh, Graz is one of them. Uh, Sean's been playing Liberator a lot. And I do think colorless has gotten a little bit better than it was, say, maybe like two years ago. And I guess there, there were some artifact sets in there, um, which definitely is going to help that cause. Let's, uh, let's go no again. See how bad this gets. We get a land this time. Love it. So yeah, I would say it's a little bit less painful than it was a few years ago, but... 
you know, I think still one of the best things, like if you have Kozilek the Great Distortion in the command zone, that was a super popular colorless commander for a long time because with that, basically all that needs to happen is you just need to ramp to Kozilek and Kozilek will draw you most of the cards you need to draw. And so when you can solve like one of your big problems in the command zone, that is really nice with colorless, you know, and particularly in the case of Eldrazi where they all have some big powerful effect attached to them. But yeah, we could use a little card draw now, and it's just, you know, playing a colorless deck, it's going to be tough. We found something that tapped for cards that wouldn't be awful with the Manifold Key. Uh, opponent attacks us, and everyone else is going to get stung by the Kettis. Yeah, we bleed in those life totals a bit. I'm sure gaining life in this deck is probably very difficult. I guess you could use some equipment, but it's a question of whether you choose to run them or not. Yeah, I'm not seeing any... Yeah, I'm not seeing the equipment that gain life, so... Uh, I imagine it'll be pretty hard to gain some life. Trading post, maybe? Gain some life trading post if we really need to, but it's not really its uh, primary primary use. Uh, our, our final opponent, by the way, is Jenka Tamar piloting Gisela the Broken Blade, and this is the Angel Precon deck. And uh, we've seen this one a bunch on the channel. It is a very solid Precon deck. And Gisela is a nice mid-game creature here, 4-3 flyer. It's going to get some people for some damage and probably gain a lot of life, and then eventually it'll flip into Brazella, and that is a big problem. <laughs> I don't know that the, well, this helps us block flying. Here's a mirror, there's an alloy mirror. Uh, I guess we can cast Graz this turn. Yeah, cast our commander. Seems like a good use of mana. Are we still, oh right, manifold key. Gotta use the manifold key. Cast our commander, and pass like that. This is actually pretty spicy, because if you start laying creatures down there, and the thing, may, uh, Graz turns them all into juggernauts, that's, uh, something will get really big. Yeah, you know, I almost wonder if I should throw that in my angel deck. Though maybe it is a little bit win more, because it's like, if you have three angels, you can probably kill some players. <laughs> right? By the time that, like, you have enough angels that, like, this, you really start to feel this. Uh, you know, if you're up around three, four, five angels, you know, one of them being Aurelia. Yeah, I don't know if you necessarily need that much damage, but it is very low cost to play. I should probably look at this card a little bit more than I do. I don't tend to run it very often. Opponent's going to keep hitting us with the thing. Keep saying no. Oh! Oh, what did we just... Oh, God. Oh, we just lost so much life. Well, I'll probably have to start drawing cards after this. Or let them draw cards, rather. KO did get himself a Phyrexian Arena last turn. That'll be very solid. Get much-needed card draw. KO's gonna crack his own Armillary Sphere. Yep, seems solid with a Silas. Although, why not do that before combat to get it back? Miss Sequence, most likely. I know what's interesting about this, too. One, we can make things unblockable, which is super helpful, and that's a reason that I like. It's a reason that I like to run manifold key um, sometimes. Uh, but also, because this is required to attack, we can untap it. So it's almost like giving it vigilance in a sense. So if we need a blocker, it's uh, not a bad place to be. Shattered Angel. Oh man, I always run run Shattered Angel. Uh, getting it down early like this, you know, as long as the board wipe doesn't go off, like they're probably gonna gain a ton of life. Uh, four going over to Ko. Adaptive Automaton. Cool. Another creature. Creatures are good. We like creatures. Play the Wastes. It's our last land unless we can find some card draw. Triggers the Shattered Angel. Yep. I should really start jamming that into some decks. Man, if it were four mana instead of three, it'd be so much easier to justify. Five mana. Yeah, there's a lot of good cards that are competing for your attention at five mana, especially with angels. Okay, let's get the Adaptive Automaton. Did we get two mana out of this yet? Nope, not yet. Oh, do we choose Mirror or Juggernaut with this thing? It's a question of whether our commander is going to stay in play or not. Um, let's go... Let's go Mirror. Wait, so, like, how does this work? It's basically... Okay, it's basically just an Anthem. Let's go Juggernaut, then. I couldn't remember if this is the one that, like, puts plus one counters on the things. Choosing Juggernaut. Let's get an Alloy Mirror. Yeah, I mean, like, these things are giant, right? This is a 5-3 and this is a 6-4. <laughs> that is pretty good. Now we've got a 10-8. Uh, we've lost some life to seven deadly on the stuff, so let's go back and try to sting them for a little bit. Yeah, they're going to block. <laughs> it's a lot of damage. doesn't have trample. We are probably the threat, and that's not great because our life total is starting to dwindle quite a bit. Oh, it's the wrath of God. That's the wrath of God. Creature's getting blued up. Back of the command zone. I mean, it's like you kind of have to, <laughs> right? That's Yeah, it just makes everything turn into a lot of damage. A lot, a lot of damage. Imagine if you didn't go mere tribal with this and you just went, like, everything. You know, just make it the best deck you can. This seems pretty good, man. Each bonus sacrifices an artifact or enchantment. Don't love it. Uh, I think it's going to be the Stoneforge, though. 
the other two. We can make up damage pretty easily in this deck, so giving up the Stone Forge seems fine. Uh, they can draw the card. Hard Life's getting low. Uh, maybe a Toma Legends in here to draw more. It's probably one of your best colorless draw sources. Cat is coming back. Elixir of Immortality coming in. Path of Ancestry for Jenka. Haven't seen that art. Looks nice, though. Cosmos Elixir. Yeah, that's another one that draws cards, although... For our deck, I don't know that it would work super great for our deck. It works good if you're in a life gain deck like this. The if you're only draw if you're only gaining two life, it's like pretty underwhelming for a four drop. They draw at the end step. We could use something big. Arch of Oriska is okay. Do we? Uh, we probably don't have enough stuff to trigger it. Ten or more permanents. Uh, of course we're on nine. Of course we're on nine. Uh, well I guess we played the very risky unprotected Acroma's Memorial because we need to get permanents into play. Don't love it though. Pass like that. Well, that didn't take long. Dismantling Wave, Shooting, Acromos Memorial, Cosmos Elixirs, and Elixir of Immortality. At least they didn't cycle it. Cycling it against this deck would just be death. Had a really good play with doing that the other day, cycling the Dismantling Wave. Pony can draw. Beseech the Queen, casting a Sakashima, which is what they tutored for. Two Kettises, oh man, that's a lot of damage. So that's double Kettis triggers. Luckily it's only one, but still, if they get bigger at all, it will be a very big problem. We're down to 21. Lyra Dawnbringer and a Scry. Oh, would I love a Lyra Dawnbringer in this moment. That lifelink looks very delicious. We're down to 21 already. Weirdly, we're on nine permanents, but we still have the city's blessing for some reason. I don't know if this token is like counting itself as a permanent. I think that's what's happening. Oh, for the rest of the game. Okay. So uh, we only had to do, we only had to control it for just a split second. Cool. Uh, Brass Squire is pretty underwhelming. Draw with the arch. It's a land. Play the land. I do want to get to that magic 12 mana, um, so that's not the worst thing. Play the Brass Squire. You can finally make double mana with this thing, which is nice. Uh, actually, we just hit the magic 12 mana mark, which means uh, we can lay down the Mirror Incubator on our next turn and uh, try to win the game the following turn. Treebeard, Gracious Host coming in. Trample Ward. Uh, enters battlefield, create two food tokens. Whenever you gain life, put that many counters on it. Or a halfling or a tree folk. I imagine that will get large. The problem is, is that, uh, like, not a lot of damage has really happened to the board. Uh, opponents are at 32, 35, and 40. As much damage as this deck can punch out, that is a lot of damage to have to do. However, KO has a turn coming up with Kedis here, and that could significantly reduce other people's life totals. Unfortunately, Lyra can gain some of that back, which will certainly be a concern. We do need to get everyone to the moment, too, where, like, they're tapped out and just, you know, don't have a whole bunch of tricks available for when we make the big play. Opponent returns the tree beer to their hand. I didn't see what they sacrificed it to. Finally chooses someone other than us. Maybe they're wanting to mill more. The angel deck can, like, reasonably gain the life back and actually, like, do the mill. Seven is a lot, though. Gives them a card. Yeah. That's the place that we're getting to. This thing's kind of nasty. It's not, like, particularly fast, but this late in the game. If you proliferate it, that's not bad. If we catch another land off the top, here's what we can do. We can end step all is dust by using Emergence Zone to clear out at whatever our opponents have going. And then, then do the Mirror Incubator. At the next end step, like at the following turn cycle end step, crack the Incubator, then cast our Commander and, like, that should do it. Quasi-duplicate. Uh, there are three Kedises now. It's terrifying. Luckily, everyone has a little bit of blocking. That will get out of hand really quickly. Unfortunately, we can't cast the Mirror Incubator and still have enough mana to instant speed all his dust. Unless we find something really cool off the top. The question is whether opponents know that this is the win condition. I would... It just depends on whether they've seen it or not, because unless you've seen it before... Uh, like, you're probably not immediately going to recognize it as such. Um, but Jeff has played this deck a bit, so it's a question of whether they faced Jeff's deck before. There's a Search for Glory. Oh, God, you want to get with the Search for Glory? My money's on Bruna. No, they go for the Book of Exalted Deeds. So feeling like they need to get, uh, some life gain and some bodies kind of going. That's fair. Plus, they can do that this turn, which, which would be good. The Book of Exalted Deeds. Over to Kao. Kao takes a hit for five. Jenka goes up five. And they get a 3-3 three, three at the end step. Not bad. Mirror Turbine, you say. Interesting. So it'll take essentially, what, eight mana? Eh, more than that, nine, I think. 
Nine for the instant speed, all is dust. I'm really worried about what KO can do with three Kedises. Also of note, we did not draw that extra land that I was talking about. Do we go instant speed, all is dust, or do we try to just go for the win? Instant speed, all is dust is the safer play. Like any equipment, and this becomes probably death. Knight of the Sweet's Revenge. Treebeard, coming back. And they've got a Panharmonicon, so everything double ETBs. Seems disgusting. And they're going to start gaining life. Gaining more life. Thing gets bigger. Gaining more life. It's a 611. Over to the Angel deck. It'd be cool if you uh, didn't have to control the equipment or the creature, and you can move opponent's equipment. That'd be really funny, but it doesn't do that, sadly. Choosing KO this time. Eight counters on this thing. Oh, my. Cackling counterpart. More Kettises. Sends a single Silas Wren over to Jenka. We'll get stung for eight. Guess that's going to happen. Yeah. I didn't see what artifact they got back. Elixir of Immortality. Down to 13. Yep. Waiting for KO to tap out the blue mana before we do anything. Elixir of Immortality is back. Cracks the elixir. Hmm. Still three mana up. Angel of the Ruins. Oh, no. Let's see what opponent's thinking. I'd really love if it was uh, not our stuff. What do they target? Thank God. Uh, this orb thing and the Panharmonicon. Fantastic. Right now, I'm, I'm starting to think the play might be uh, just main phase all is dust this turn. I am worried about the blue mana Ko has, though. He's got three cards left. On the other hand, what are the chances that we catch a land off the top, right? If we catch a land off the top, we'll still have the 12 we need to um, not really lose tempo. See what they're thinking with the angels. Yeah, going over to seven deadly. Nope, changing their mind. One in the Ko. I'll draw before I forget. I think I'm going to go with the main phase plan. Semblance Anvil. Interesting. Eh, maybe not the most helpful in this juncture. Do need to pray that the All is Dust resolves. They make another angel. Uh, there's the land we were kind of needing. Play the land. Do we All is Dust right now, or do we wait for a KO to be hopefully tapped out at some point? Oh, I don't know what we could do. Yeah, okay. Let's just main phase All is Dust. Hope for the best. Uh, opponent's going to sacrifice a creature to make a food before everything gets blown up. Uh, opponent's going to turn more stuff to their hand. Yep, Treebeard coming back. Getting back, I think it was Commander's Plate. That resolves, thank God. So that cleans out the board. And we didn't have to sacrifice our land, which is good, although we don't get the benefit of uh, the massive tempo play of doing it at the end step. Uh, I'm going to cast the Mirror Incubator. It's a little risky. I hope they don't shoot it, but cast the Mirror Incubator. If we catch a land off the top, that gives us enough to cast our Commander and crack the Incubator in a single turn. Yeah, we're staying back. <laughs> we're at very low life. Tranquil Frillback. Oh, please don't destroy an artifact. Crap. Wind condition down. I did the thing you're not supposed to do. Oh, uh, that sucks. And Angel's Graveyard got exiled. Crap. So much artifact removal this game. How do we win now? Ideally, uh, Mere Battlesphere is a reasonable answer. I guess there's Eldrazi in here. If we caught one of those, that'd be super helpful. But we've lost some big pieces. There's a Buried Rune in here, which could be helpful to get something back. Is Trading Post get artifacts back? Yes. Trading Post wouldn't be terrible. And that's sort of the problem of, like, opponents had a full hand all game because we let them draw so many cards. And when that happens, like, yeah, they're just going to have more removal because they keep drawing more cards. And super frustrating. It's It sucks because we're colorless and it's just harder to draw. They're 10 cards ahead of us, right? You know what we could do with an extra 10 cards? Probably a lot. Interestingly, we can tap this twice if we want to. Would uh, speed up the time it takes to get to searching for a mirror. Wouldn't be terribly sad to see a wheel, but we've passed the blue deck already. Keeper of the Accord. Yep, that's a good one. And at this point, like, most of the removal should be gone, so that's probably going to stick, I would think. Ooh, a Johnny Strength of the Pride. Yeah. Mirror Reservoir. Makes double mana for mirror. Returns a mirror card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, we've got Alloy Mirror. Just the Alloy Mirror. The game is kind of slowed down a bit now. Let's get the Mirror Turbine into play. Oh, crap, crap. I wasn't supposed to use a Manifold Key. Hmm. That was bad. How much mana is left? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's enough for our commander. Nope, too short. Never mind, it died one time. Um, Play the Mirror Reservoir, then. Return the Alloy Mirror. And I did not tap my lands all the best. So I think if I tap better, we could have gotten that into play. Pass like that. What I should have done is 
play the mirror turbine last turn. And if they shoot that, that's fine. Like it's it's nice, but it's not it's not this, right? This just ends the game. And then the following turn go with that, but that like you're talking about a multiple turn setup there. On the other hand, I guess maybe we should have went with the uh, end step all is dust. Like if we had the land in hand, I would it would have been much easier and that's really just a matter of like if we had drawn like a few extra cards. Be much easier to set that play up, but ugh. Samwise, coming back into play. I'm not convinced about Semblance Anvil in the deck. Pull from Eternity. Getting back Panharmonicon, gross. Yeah, like, I get it, but I think you're just better off. Like, there's so many artifacts that tap for two now, and, like, I, I get it. The idea with this is that when you cast multiple spells, it's a lot of cost reduction. Eh, there's three coming into us. Can't do much about it. Guess we could block with a 1-1, one, one, but I don't really want to. But... I don't, this isn't really like a storm deck, right? Like, you know, based on the problem we have here, like, this deck runs out of cards, so you're only going to be casting so many things in a turn. I would happily take the, um, what's the Hedron Archive that exiles graveyards? Like, I would happily take that in its spot. I know that card, I don't think that card's on Magic Online yet, but, you know. Especially if you're doing the Manifold Key thing, right? And you have Voltaic Key in here also. I'd much rather go that route, because the card, the card advantage is so rough, right? If Kozilek was our commander... And you had the draw back up to seven, maybe, right? Like, maybe that starts to make sense, but I think the card advantage is just so painful. Not convinced about the Semblance Anvil. And there's a lot of good artifacts, too, right? Like, you could make, you could turn that into something else. Like, there's so many good artifacts now. Kettis coming back, don't love it. Really need KO to chill with the Kettis. Spark Double, awesome. Make another Kettis. Now I wonder if we have, like, enough speed left to kill him before all that stuff kills us. Forsaken Monument uh, gains life, which is notable. Here comes Silas. Yep. I guess the other players will get it worse because we're the one taking the Silas hit. Uh, let's tap the Mirror Turbine just before I forget. Though, mm, the white deck plays a board wipe. Would the white deck play a board wipe? Mm, they could. Keeper of the Accord, two triggers. Yep. Maybe we should wait. Arcane Signet. Gisela coming back. Yep. Flying is not particularly good for us. We'll make a mirror before I forget. No attacks. Yeah, probably just wait. The ground's starting to get a little clogged up. Uh, Obelisk of Erd. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting, so, like, the Anthems, and so, like, I switched this over, I just basically did a straight switch of the commander. If you're running Graz in the command zone, you can probably just cut all the Anthems, uh, because this is an amazing Anthem, right? Not that this is bad, but... Uh, Imprint, unfortunately, exiles. We do need all the mirror we can get. Ugh. I don't feel good about anything that's going on here. We just pay the six? Would love to imprint something with this thing, that would make life a little easier for us. But in the end, I don't know that that really matters. Tempted the card draw. Getting our commander is not a bad idea. Getting our commander might get us killed, though, is another concern. This isn't a mirror. Does it have mirror anywhere on it? No, it's just it's only a juggernaut. We tend to get that in. Yeah, maybe we are going for the semblance anvil. Let's tap the mirror turbine. Uh, let's use this. Get the alloy mirror. Really want to draw a card. Man. Cast the obelisk. I don't plan to block with this guy. If we... Oh, we have a soul ring. Okay, so we might be able to draw a card, actually. Yeah, we'll have exactly enough to draw a card. Choosing Mirror. Oh, I should have did one more because of the Manifold key in the thing. Mmm, crap. Crap, crap, crap. Now well, I've got some 3-3s three out there now. We'll just pass like that. We've got some instant speed stuff we can work with. Stay in put. Academy Manufacturer. Seems good. Insanely good. Treebeard, coming back. Yeah, this is going to make a ton of stuff. Pat to Exile on the Academy Manufacturer. Love it. Also a good thing we didn't cast our commander, because that probably would have gotten path if we tried. Uh, they're going to sacrifice it, which means they can get it back, but at least we'll slow them down. They won't get all the crazy mana right here. Yep, and they're just going to do that right now. Sam Loyal Attendant coming in. Yep, opponent just doing value train of nonsense. Partner, huh? I might take a shuffle. I'll take a shuffle. See what's in the deck. There's a mere retriever in the deck. That's actually not an awful one, because we have some big things in the graveyard we'd really like to get back. Cackling counterpart. Yeah. Ortheon. Ugh. So he has a non legend Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, that actually probably makes KO the threat. And hopefully takes heat off of us. Because then if he can make a whole bunch of Kettises, that is a problem. Glass Pool Mimic? Sure, why not? Make another. And the problem is, if anyone lets this damage go through now, now we just die. Unless he comes at us. Hopefully he comes at us. No attacks. Interesting. Keeper of the Accord. Yep. Yeah. It's been a lot of Keeper triggers. Keeper doing work. You know, a little bit of... If we got milled a little bit, it wouldn't be terrible. Because, uh... 
You can get stuff back with this, but... Safara. Oh, that's a tough one to deal with. I don't know if we can really beat that, honestly. Someone else would have to deal with it. Ugin would be a good pickup. Opponent gains some life that's going to trigger both of their Ajani Pridemate tokens. Marble Diamond. Gisela. Over to Kale. Opponent gains life. The cats get bigger. Okay, uh, I think I've decided on card draw at the end step here, as opposed to double activating the um, Mirror Turbine. Well, actually, it's three, four, three, three, four, five. Nope, I was hoping to be able to get a counter on this Mage Ring Network, but it doesn't look like that's going to work out. Iron Claw Mirror. Nah, what are you looking for? Need the big stuff, not the small stuff. Uh, Mirror Sire. Mirror Sire Dyers, you know, that's also the small stuff. Hmm, now what? All right, make a thing with the mirror turbine. Oh, crap, we didn't actually need to do that. So we have five mirror. Ah, I keep making mistakes. Too many mistakes. Yeah, Battle Sphere is probably the best thing we can get, but really we probably need to be on, like, an Eldrazi. I mean, I guess we could try to kill a bunch of Kettises by just casting our commander and swinging into KO. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the play. We're, like, I mean, I don't think we can survive. Yeah, like... Yeah, we, we lost our win condition, right? So there's just not that much we can do. On the other hand, I mean, no, because we can't play it cool because he's just going to make 4,000 Kettises. Yeah, I mean, we've been, like, so passive this game, trying to, like, dodge stuff. I probably, I mean, they had the removal, so cast our commander. Yeah, swing these into KO. Did he just not block? Ha! <laughs> he didn't block? Huh, that was unexpected. Uh, we can cast a mirror. Cast the mirror, sire. Here comes the Academy Manufacturer. Opponent gains some life. The tree is getting bigger. 1217. It's pretty big. Combat. Makes a food. Uh, opponent attacks, but I don't think it was the right attack. Because they can just block. I think the big one should be going into uh, a Johnny. Unless they have a follow-up. Oh, I guess if they take them... No, okay, never mind. Yeah, if they take them off of their massive life total, then they can't do the thing with a Johnny. Okay, I'm on board. Opponent gained more life. Yep. Thing is gonna get bigger. 1520. Jenka takes a shot. Loses some creatures, goes down to 37. And importantly, they don't have 42 damage right now, but like we could. So that might keep them off of us for a turn. Now I have no idea how we get through Safara and Gisela, which is unfortunate. Also, like, we don't have the roughly what 80 life that they have. We don't have that kind of damage. But that is a cycle dismantling wave. We can probably just pick our cards up right here. That's unfortunate. Um, opponent going to gain more life. I think that's a misplay on opponent's part, right? Because we have the damage to, like, potentially do something about 7 deadly. They don't. Now, they're eliminating a player, but, like, they can just hold that over us and, like, whenever the moment comes, right? I mean, or just, like, they can negotiate, too, and just be like, hey, I've got removal. You need to attack over there, right? Yeah, protection is probably the biggest thing that's hard to get access to in uh, Colorless. There's just really not a lot of stuff. Voyager Staff and, like, Cauldron of Souls, maybe. Cauldron's kind of mana intense, though. We get a 1-1. One, one. And, I mean, re really, I needed to not get our win condition shot, right? If I play smarter with the win condition, easy win. Easy win this game. Dawnbreak Reclaimer is a magic card. He has no creatures in Graveyard, though. Wow. Graveyard Exile. Opponent sends the two in the air. That is just not going to be enough, though. Uh, we can put a counter on the Mage Ring Network. Thran Dynamo is... Man, Thran Dynamo would have been much helpful. Much more helpful earlier in the game. That is for sure. We'll draw a card. Do I think it's going to matter? Not really. Mirror Enforcer. Infinity for artifacts. I mean, there's some hope while those two have to slog it out that we can, like, climb back into this thing. But what is that? Three artifacts for us? The Great Henge. More stuff. Eleanor Gardner. This has 23 power. Rift Sweeper. Getting back their annoying Palantir of Ordenthak thing. Ugh, I'm annoyed at myself for getting the wind condition killed. I've been telling opponents about it in the chat. Just, I'm frustrated because it didn't need to happen like that. <laughs> like, I, I'm frustrated because I should have played smarter, right? That's what's frustrating about it. Opponents send in another attack. The 23 going into their life total. And, I mean, some of that's going to get through. They just don't have that much. But sending the others into the Planeswalker. would love to see that Planeswalker go, go down just because we've been... They're gaining so much life that, like, we're constantly chasing, you know, being in the danger zone of that Planeswalker. So, yeah. So, like, 
Semblance Anvil is cost reduction of two. You could play a you could play Cloud Key and not have to exile and get cost reduction of one. And I mean, that's just it's so much less cost, right? Uh, opponent's really trying to save that Planeswalker. Triple block should kill that. The reason I did cast the our, the, the win condition at the time was because I was worried about the tempo, right? I was worried that people would rebuild so quickly that we wouldn't really have the time to do the thing, and that didn't turn out to be the case. We would have had time to play it safe, which all, which makes it all more frustrating, right? Uh, nasty little attack right there. Samwise goes down, and uh, Keeper goes down. Probably a few tokens, too. I didn't see everything. And they're both gaining so much life that, like, they're really going to have a lot of trouble killing each other. Uh, Jank is out of cards, which is real bad for him, too, where uh, Seven Deadly has, like, card advantage with this and with the commander ability. There's a War Room. That'll get him an extra card. Is there a War Room in this deck? There's not. There should be a War Room in this deck. Yeah, that's, like, a really easy one. Get rid of one of these crappy lands. Um, I question how good... Yeah, Mage Ring Network, I think, is just going to be a little too hard. Heirloom Blade with cool art. Sweet. Wouldn't be a bad inclusion for this deck would help with the card advantage when stuff dies be nice if opponent gave us a creature back with the dawnbreak reclaimer heirloom on gisella yeah opponent gain in life cats get bigger sends the two flyers sends three flyers this will be a shot in the air i mean it's not going to be lethal honestly hmm. i wonder if they should be playing for blocks and trying to get there with commander damage with the amount of life that they're gaining that makes the most sense i think right it's just, especially as Mono White, it's just going to be hard to out-damage how much life gain they have. Plus, they could probably use the blockers against, you know, in particular, this really big one. More life gain, cats get bigger. Well, yeah, the cats are catching up to the thing, but I'm sure Seven Deadly will have more stuff to do. Dawnbreak Reclaimer. Yep, get your Keeper back. What do they give us? Uh, we get Adaptive Automaton. Choosing Mirror. Back to our turn. That's a Makokoro. That is a super late Makokoro. Play the Makokoro. Activate the Makokoro. Need an Ugin. Mere Convert is not an Ugin. Draw another card. Seagate Wreckage. Um, I have, might reasonably be able to activate that. <laughs> that is actually a thing that could happen. Cast the Mere Convert. How much does this thing cost? Uh, that costs two. Cast that. Pass like that. Still looking for Ugin. I don't think we're going anywhere. Just let those two keep battling it out. Maybe we find a way back in it. it seems unlikely. Anything could happen. I want to bring him back something. I'm sure we'll see it in a second. Academy Manufacturer. Disgusting. Man, for all the punches that they've put into Jenka, like with this giant tree, Jenka's still at 51. That's insane. Funny thought about Seagate Wreckage. I've looked at this card in the past. If you think that you're going to need to use a Seagate Wreckage or that you're going to be able to activate it in a game, you're probably already going to lose the game, right? Because running out of cards means you're probably going to lose the game. So... Uh, like an easy switch would be, I, this is, the, I would cut that over. I don't know, what, I don't know if I cut a land yet, but yeah, Seagate Wreckage just, it's sort of a trap in that, like, oh yeah, if I'm empty-handed, I can draw a card. But if you're empty-handed, you've probably already lost. So, that's the issue that I'm gonna try to solve while this game is kind of carrying on between opponents here. Peregrine Took. Yep, additional food. Last March of the Ents. Draw cards equal to the greatest toughness. Wow, that's gonna be... Oh, then put any number of creature cards from you. Yeah, that card uh, I have a real problem with, honestly. Um, because they are now going to draw 30 and uh, drop in probably as many creatures. Too strong. I don't care that it costs 8, right? Like, it just... Having a big creature in green is, like, barely a requirement to meet. Yeah. So much stuff. So much stuff. Not sure if there's anything that, like, truly ends the game in here. Uh, those triggers might. The great... The Great Henge is not a May. Is the Great Henge a May? The Great Henge is not a May. Their deck is going to be getting really thin. This is actually where I wish I had a memory jar. <laughs> uh, they're going to be making a lot of food, though, which means they might be able to make that one thing big enough to actually punch through for enough damage. Yep, there's all the triggers. I'd be amazed if this game doesn't crash. Oh, this game's definitely going to crash. Ooh, Infiltration Lens actually seems like a good one for this deck. Uh, Jenka just scoops. Well, if that's happening, then we can't survive the thing. So, yeah, we'll scoop there. Our next card was Skull Clamp. That's frustrating. Yeah, opponent had a million cards in hand. So anyway, here's what I think I would take out. Particularly when you're playing Graz in the command zone, uh, I don't think you need as many Anthems. Like, Coat of Arms is a weird card that 
makes tracking difficult. Like, I get why you run it, but... Uh, this is the stuff that I would cut. Semblance Anvil, I did not like at all. Uh, Grafted Exoskeleton, I get why it's in here, but... I don't know that it's really necessary. So I would cut these. Uh, looks like we have a few more to go still. Three additional cuts. And, like, really, I would just focus on, like... Yeah, I mean, I'd focus on ramping a little bit more, uh, but definitely drawing a lot more cards. And... Because basically just, like, get a couple creatures in, cast Graz, and that should be good enough, right? I know Ashnod's Altar is, like, part of the combo when you're doing the thing, but is it is it win more, right? Like, it might be. Because if you're already activating the Mirror Reservoir, then, like, you should probably be winning the game, but... You know, I don't even know if Cloud Key is that necessary, honestly. I think I would stay with the Voltaic Key multi-tapper plan. I think I'd like that better. Anyway, here's the stuff that I would add. Uh, Maze Mine... Tome, Tome of Legends, Voltaic Key, Memory Jar. Uh, I know Memory Jar can be a little pricey. I don't know if it got reprinted recently. Uh, Temple Bell, it's like, it's a super easy card, right? Yeah, everyone draws, and I get it. That's like a little out of fashion, but like, if you're way behind, this will keep you from falling behind everyone. I mean, it's the, probably the first one that I would cut, but it is helpful. Because if someone else is at like six or seven cards, them drawing an extra card, unless it's a combo deck, doesn't always matter that much. Like, if they're at six or seven and you're at one or two, right, like, you getting an extra card is more helpful than them getting an extra card. And honestly, what are we getting rid of? I question the Pyre of Heroes, how good that actually is. Like, yeah, you can get specific things with it, but... Like, even in the best case scenario, you work your way up to Mere Battlesphere, and like, that's fine, but... I don't know. Yeah, I might cut it. All right, there we go. I'll cut the Temple Bell, even though I don't want to. Um, so yeah, I think that this would make the deck a lot more solid. And again, it's because we are switching, just straight switching the commander. Like, when you do that, the deck obviously wants slightly different things. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching.